Some of you know that I had shoulder surgery a couple months ago. Been working on flexibility and it's going real well. Now I get to start working on strength. But look at this. This is all the docs allowing me to lift these days. How am I ever going to be strong enough to go work out in the field again? Well, I guess for now, I'm just going to have to focus on this video. Temperature correction factors. If we look at 310.15a for a moment, it tells me to use the ampacities as found on tables dot 16 through dot 21. But it also adds, use these ampacities as modified by the rules in dot 15 a through f. We'll be looking at b here, how to modify these ampacities when our conductors are in ambient temperature conditions different from those of any of the particular tables. I have another video on dot 15 C, ampacity adjustment, how to modify the ampacities when we have more than three current carrying conductors, and another one on E, whether to count the neutral as a current carrying conductor or not. Well, let's start this video by looking at the informational notes below dot 14 A3. What we find here is that the temperature rating of a conductor cannot be exceeded for prolonged periods of time. Otherwise, we risk damaging or degrading the insulation. Also, as a conductor works its way through a building, it may encounter different ambient temperatures in different locations. Now these notes go on to say that the heat generated in any conductor, simply by virtue of it carrying current, must be dissipated into the ambient medium. What they mean by ambient medium is the air or the insulation or the concrete, whatever directly surrounds your cable or your conduit. The point here that we're looking at is that the hotter the environment is, the harder it is to dissipate the heat from conductors. Think of a train, pack it full of people on a hot day. Doesn't matter if you open the windows, we're still gonna sweat to death. But same train, same number of people on a cold day, you might be quite comfortable because any heat you generate can quite easily dissipate into the cooler environment. So where am I gonna worry about this at work? Well, outdoors or in non-air conditioned buildings in parts of the country where the temperatures are often hotter than the conditions required for your ampacity tables. Table 310.16 requires an ambient temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit for these ampacities. If you're hotter than that, you'll need to reduce the ampacities. But interestingly, if your environment is cooler than that, you may be able to increase the ampacities. Other locations might be in some industrial facilities, hot pieces of equipment or being close to that. Uh, factory floors, some of those are hot all the time. Uh, think of attics. Depending on ventilation, they can, they can get extremely hot up there. Now, here's a quick note on residential attics, because in residences, you're often using Romax or NM cable, which has an interesting quality. It's constructed to the 90 degrees Celsius rating, so I can start my calculations with these ampacities. However, I can never run more amps on it than those in the 60 degree column. So that reduction in ampacity is often enough to accommodate your temperatures in your attic, especially if they're well ventilated. Now, some locations, you're gonna to have to determine your own temperature, but outdoors, what do I use in my city? Temperature's always changing. There's a little informational note at the end of dot 15B, and it tells me I can use the ASHRAE handbook. Now that's put out by the heating and air conditioning folks, and they'll charge you money for that book. But if you look at copper.org and do a search there 
for uh, outdoor and rooftop temperatures, scroll down a few inches, you can click on that link and it will give you the temperatures across hundreds of cities throughout the US and Canada. I have a little snippet of it here. So let's take a look at that. I clipped out data for a few cities in three states to show the differences across the US. Now the info note says to use this ASHRAE handbook, but didn't specify which temperature, max temp or this 2% design temp. However, the commentary in the NEC handbook uses this column. So I have confidence following their example. And what this means is that these temperatures are only exceeded 2% of the time during summer months. So yes, it will get hotter than this at times, but remember what I quoted from that info note earlier in this video? That the temperature rating cannot be exceeded for prolonged periods of time. And these temperatures are only exceeded for relatively short periods of time, less than 2% in the summer. These distances above the roof used to be important because our ampacities would differ depending how far above the roof surface our conduits were run. But that changed in 2017, and the code now is only concerned if we're less than 7 eighths of an inch off the roof surface. And if we are that close, it requires us to add 60 degrees Fahrenheit to our outdoor temperatures. And sure enough, What's the difference between these two columns? 60 degrees, 60 degrees. So as it stands now, we're only concerned with these two columns. However, since I mentioned rooftops, we should note dot 14A2. It tells us that if we have a circuit length that encounters multiple ampacities, we have to use the lower ampacity for the whole thing. Well, we could have that situation here. Let's say the inside of this building is air conditioned, so these wires may not need temperature correction, but if it's in a hot climate, it goes out here onto the rooftop, and that would need to be derated because of the higher ambient temperature, possibly. But the key part here is this exception that doesn't make me derate the whole circuit if it's only a small portion going out. If the part in the higher temperature, therefore resulting in a lower ampacity, is less than 10% of the length and less than 10 feet long, I don't need to derate for that short portion. It allows me to run wires up to disconnect, say for HVAC equipment on a roof or the required service receptacles up there without having to derate for that short distance. However, if I want to add another receptacle out here on the roof and run that conduit fully outdoors, dot 15 B2 tells me that I would need to run that at the outdoor, accounting for the outdoor temperature. And it's also key that I have to hold that at least seven eighths of an inch off the roof surface. If I'm less than seven eighths, not only do I need to adjust the ampacity for the hotter outdoor temperature, I would also need to add 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That was that second column we were talking about on the ASHRAE handbook sheet. Okay, now let's get to the actual mechanics of calculating the new ampacities here. First thing we want to look at is our ampacity tables. Now you could pick any of the half dozen that are there and you want to look at note one. The temperature that these ampacities are based on is also in the written section that correlates to the table number, but note one has the same thing. And I'm going to see either that these ampacities are based on an ambient temperature of 30 degrees Celsius or for some tables for 40 degrees Celsius. And expectedly so, it tells me to look at dot 15B. Now this section gives me a couple options. They give me a formula that I can use or I can go to one of two tables. Dot 15B1, which is for 
and opacity tables based on a 30 degrees Celsius temperature, ambient temperature, or B2, which would be based on 40 degrees Celsius. So we've got to make sure we're on the right table for the ampacity uh, table that we are using based on its ambient temperature. First thing we'll notice when we look at the table is we have three temperature ratings here with various factors below them. And these correlate to these temperature ratings. If I have a 90 degrees Celsius wire, I would be using the factors in this column. Likewise, if I had a 75 degrees Celsius wire, the factors in this column. And I have my ambient temperatures on the outsides, Celsius here, Fahrenheit here. Next thing I want us to see is that at 30 degrees Celsius and 86 degrees Fahrenheit and a few degrees lower, the factor is one. Well, that means that if I'm actually at this ambient temperature, I simply take these ampacities times one, which leaves me with these ampacities. It's when I'm cooler than that, that I can use a larger factor and increase my ampacity. Or for most of us, it's when we're getting hotter than that, that my factors get less and less as the temperature increases. Last thing I want us to see here, I left out a couple of lines here and then there's more lines at the bottom of the table, but I want us to, us to see the dashes over here in the 60 degree column. There's a dash here, no factor for 56 to 60. Well, think about that for a second. If your ambient temperature were 60 degrees Celsius, could you put any amps on that wire? Because doesn't any current increase the temperature to a certain degree? So I have to be below my rate of temperature in order to run current on that wire. And 75 has dashes, but they start lower down. So let's put up a couple of wires here. We could be indoors or we could be outdoors. Either way, I picked insulations that could be used in wet environments. THWN, which is a 75 degree rate of insulation and THWN-2, rated for 90 degrees Celsius. The temperatures I picked over here were the 2% design temperatures from the ASHRAE sheet that we just saw a couple minutes ago for Anchorage, Alaska, Birmingham, Alabama, and Phoenix, Arizona. So my process here, let's say I picked, I gotta choose an ampacity first, so I picked number four wires, and because my first insulation is rated for 75 degrees. That's where I start. Number four, 85 amps at 75 degrees. And so that's the starting amp for all of these that are using THWN. It's the factors that are different depending on the ambient temperatures. And over here on the 90 degree rated wire, I would just run over to the 90 degree column, 95 amps. So that's where they start the calculation. Okay. Then over here in Anchorage, Alaska, ambient temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I would take my 85 amps and multiply it by my factor. Well, notice that this is below the temperature for these rated ampacities. So what does that mean on my column? I find 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is here, or the Celsius equivalent if you're using that and it's a 75 degree rated wire, so I go in the 75 column, Celsius that is, and I get 105 as my factor. So I can increase that ampacity slightly. Over with its 90, uh, with its 90 degree rated insulation, I would stay in the 70 degree column because that's my ambient air temperature, but I would pick the factor from the rating of the wire's insulation. So I get a 1.04 factor over here. When I move down to Birmingham, Alabama, I still start with my 85 amps, 75 degrees Celsius wire, but my factor at 94 degrees Fahrenheit, this insulation would be 0.94. And it's 90 degree wire, still 94 degrees ambient temperature, 0.96. 
My numbers for Phoenix actually fell in one of the rows that I left out of this table, but they would settle in here at 0.82 over here and 0.87 would be in this column. So what do we get for our answers? As you might expect, conductors that are in areas with lower ambient temperatures will result in higher ampacities than those in higher ambient temperatures. And we want to remember, these are the new ampacities of these conductors. No longer is this THWN-2 rated for 95 amps. Because of the correction, these are the new ampacities under these conditions of ambient temperature. So this is the max these conductors can carry in these locations, and the conductors need to be protected accordingly. I also want to say, when we're on roof rooftops, we want to remember to maintain that 7 eighths of an inch. Because as long as we maintain 7 eighths of an inch gap between the roof surface and our conduits, we can use these new ampacities. Just based on the 2% design temperature rating of those areas, those ambient temperatures. But if we go less than 7 eighths of an inch, we would have to add 60 degrees Fahrenheit to any of those. And that would put us way down here in the table, getting some pretty low factors. Those ampacities would drop precipitously. Okay, last thing I want to look at. What if we need to do temperature correction for higher or lower ambient temperatures than the tables require, and we need to adjust our ampacity for having more than three current carrying conductors? How do we do that? I would start with my amps from my ampacity table. Whichever table I'm using, selecting the amps from the column of the temperature rating of the conductor I'm dealing with. Multiply by my temperature correction factor, either from this table or from B2, and then multiply again by my ampacity adjustment factor that's dealt with in dot 15 C that I have another video on, and that would yield my new conductor ampacity. Even though the conductor started with 95 or 85 amps, the new ampacity could be quite different and it needs to be protected accordingly. And again, a reminder, never forget 110.14C, my temperature limitations. Hope that's been helpful with temperature correction factors. Thank you.